Hey, Toy Shooters, another scale modeling uh, update video here. Uh, this is another one of a new series I'm starting, new build series on X-Rings here. Apologies for the camera wobbling. It's suspended from one of these uh, uh, wire phone clamps I've got. It's gonna stop wobbling in a minute. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is I'm actually working on three kits at the same time three different X-Wing kits. So there's um, an X-Wing kit band I put out uh, a few months back in 2016, which I believe is exactly the same as this. I'll have to see if the model is any different when I finish the build of it. I can't really tell from the sprues, but I think the actual model is exactly the same. What isn't the same is the decals and the paint finish they sort of recommend is different. This is the Red Squadron, I guess, uh, decals and kit out that is seen in Rogue One. So I can tell, a, you know, just from looking at the book box art that it's different artwork from um, the X-Wing, which I believe is a Luke's X-Wing from episode four. You can see the droid there, obviously is an R2. It's a little gold domed uh, droid there. So two different, different X-Wings, exactly the same models, but with different finishes, which is gonna look great. The other thing with this kit is they actually include a little mini X-Wing as well. So you've got the kind of normal 172 scale X-Wing that they do most of these models with, and there's a little one of these 1444 scale uh, kits that I think they were also selling separately. So uh, I never picked one of those up on its own, but I figured, hey, this looks like a good kit. We'll get both and I can do lots of things with different scaled X-Wings, so I'm happy with that. Along with that, I picked up one of these Revel ones. Um, don't think this is linked to Rogue One. Look, this just looks like a standard X-Wing. This was very, very cheap, so I thought, screw it. Who doesn't need more X-Wings in their life? So, got another one here. Um, the kit for this is actually mixed in with this. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm not gonna show the other X-Wing I'm working on. It's not really any point at the moment once we get to sort of the end where uh, the different decals and things go on. It'll be more relevant, but um, yeah, you can kind of see what I've been doing here. So let me pull a couple of bits out first. So this is the Revel one. Um, don't know. Oh, there's the other wing. Let me just pull that out. That's the mini Bandai one. I'm going to come to that in a minute. That is the bigger Bandai one. I'll come to that in a minute. Well, it's the nose of the mini Bandai. This is what I'm looking for. So I'll start with the Revel. So why I start these things is I do sub assemblies and then. Whoa, and then I prime them uh, with black. So you can see I've done that here. Make sure I'm on camera for you. And then these wings go together. You can either have them like that, where there's kind of a support that will hold the S-foils open, uh, or I think you can put them in a different way. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm getting confused. I thought you could somehow change the um, direction the uh, wings go in and then they don't lock out. But hey, that's fine. Uh, so you can see I've primed them. There's a, f there's a few pieces with the Revel, not as many as the Bandai. Essentially, I guess these um, wings are one piece, that uh, part of the cannon is one piece. Uh, this sort of fuselage is a couple of pieces and then the same on the flip side. So probably, what, six or seven pieces, and then the same for the other wing. Um, so I prime those, and then I glued the top half of these um, fuselage peach, fuselage, blimey, that's a mouthful, fuselage, <laughs> I can't do it, third time, fuselage, we could be here all day, you know what I'm saying, the engine. Uh, glue these together um, and realize I messed up, so I'm gonna need some putty or something just to finish these off. But they're ready to go and go on to the next stage. So what I do then is put another coat of priming on, which is almost like a pre-shade, um, which is a 
grey. Uh, I haven't got anything in the box that's got that colour. Essentially it's, this is uh, Vallejo's black primer and then I put another kind of thin coat of Vallejo's grey primer on top. What I then do on the top of that is then put white. So you can see I've done that with the mini one here. So the difference between these two kits, if I hold them up to the camera there, is this one's had three coats. It's had the black, then it's had the gray, then it's had the white. Now the white, it doesn't come out as kind of true white because the undercoats change the color of um, that that white coat. So it's, a, it's darker than true white. If I prime this with gray or a lighter white, uh, ooh, let destroy my work. Uh, this would look, um, I guess, brighter, but it looks good because the, that black priming and the, and the grey coating on top of it, it brings out a lot of the sort of detail and the shadows that you normally get with doing, you know, washes. But you get that for free just by priming with dark colours. The problem with this is that second coat of grey that I put on the black kind of had shades of blue in it. So the problem is this colour scheme looks too cool. Like if you compare this with the white of the X-Wing on the box, if you can see there, you can see that white, that's a much warmer white. Even before you put any decals or weathering on, uh, that's a much, much warmer white than this. So what I've got is I've actually got another paint. Um, that I'm going to mix with the white again and spray over the spray over again, which will hopefully make this uh, a little bit warmer in tone, because I'm not happy with it at the moment. Um, if that doesn't work, yeah, I think I'll cut my losses on this small one because I don't really want to strip it of the paint now, and you know I'm not that fussed just for a little small X-wing like this. Um, and, you know, it's not going to look bad, it's just it will be better if it had that um, warmer tone, especially when the decals go on, because I think once these kind of earthy tones of the um, faded yellow there and the red go on, it's going to clash, I guess, with this cooler white. Um, but yeah, that's a problem with that primer. In fact, you can just see in between the wings there, these bits here I haven't sprayed with the white. That's what colour the primer is. So that grey has got kind of a shade of blue in it. It's not a bluey grey paint, it's just when they've manufactured it, it's got some element of um, cooler toning in it that's then making the, the white uh, look cooler. So that's the mini one. Let's talk about detail, because as I say, this is 144 scale. The bigger X-Wing uh, Bandai is 172. And I mean, good lord, the 144 looks as detailed as the 172. It's absolutely incredible. Um, we compare it to our Revel friend here, and it's just night and day. I mean, the Revel one isn't bad, actually, by their standards, because I've got some other Revel stuff, which is not good at all. But it just doesn't hold up. I mean, the Revel stuff is... Nowhere near as detailed and as fine as Bandai, which I knew, and I mean it was cheap. It's just another X-Wing that's going to be, you know, in the background of a shot I'll do later on when these are finished. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm working on these in in, in tandem. I'm doing the, the Bandai 144, the Revel, I don't even know what scale this is, and the Bandai 172 all at the same time, because obviously they're all going to need the same treatment. They're going to get primed the same, they're going to get the same top coat, they're going to get similar painting around um, the fuselage. Finally got it right, etc, um, etc. Et so much easier to work on them in tandem, tandem, even though they have slightly different builds, because when we get to the 172 scale, uh, this is in many, many more pieces, and you can see a lot of this kit is still on the sprue. Um, I will I've primed it on the sprue, some of it. I've, I've sort of done a sub-assembly of um, the wing parts, as I have done with the other X-Wing kit I've got. You can see the other parts in here. And then some of these parts will have uh, different colours. So they won't all get painted up to that uh, kind of white colour that um, you've seen on the smaller kit. I've got some of the Revel bits and pieces laying in here. 
So there's the nose of the Revel, that will go around there. Um, a few other bits that need to go on, etc. So the Revel's going to look like that. And then the nose of the um, Mini Bandai one is here. That'll pop on just like that, where there's a slot. This is a tight little fit. I'm not sure these wings are going to kind of uh, open and close when this is finished. But yeah, this one's fantastic. I'm really, really happy. I mean, look at that. Look at that detail just at the back. You can see the little droid's head. And it's tiny. It fits in the palm of my hand. And it's just a great little kit. And of course, the bigger kit will have all that detail, but will um, look better, more impressive, because it's just bigger and you can do more fine stuff with weathering at the scale it's at. So very much still at the start of this kit, like many of my other kits you've seen. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing with these. Uh, I think I'll pack Spruin first, as I had it. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can sort of proceed with these quite quickly. Uh, I've got a problem with the cockpit on a couple of them. I've just got to um, sort out this business with the um, uh, gray paint, uh, white paint, the color of it. And then yeah, hopefully I can proceed with this quite quickly and you'll see some more updates from this as it comes together. So there you go, my triple X-Wing build uh, see you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com to join our newsletter and get my free guide to toy photography. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube using the link below. When you subscribe, look for this option to be notified whenever we upload new tutorials. Otherwise, videos will probably get lost in your feed here on YouTube. To see my work on Instagram, you can follow our account at instagram.com slash we shoot toys, where you'll also find some exclusive behind the scenes videos. You can also get regular news and updates from our Facebook page at facebook.com slash toy shooter. As with YouTube, you can get notified whenever I upload news or photos by clicking on that like button arrow, then selecting all notifications. You can always change this later if I'm posting more cool stuff than you can handle. Here are all those links again. See you next time.